The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today I'm on a luxury catamaran with a length overall of 74 feet. It's the Horizon PC-74, and I'm going to put it through a full sea trial and performance evaluation, and you get to come along for the ride. Let's start by taking a look at our operational features beginning at the swim platform. In the corner of the platform, there's an 8-inch pull-up cleat eliminating tripping hazards. A 100-amp shore power cord runs into the port engine room. Towing eyes are set up so that we can tow a tender behind us. There's also a hydraulic platform in the center for storing and launching a tender. Notice the 13-inch cleats inside the hawse holes mounted into the bulwarks. This eliminates the need for chafing gear and allows us to tie the boat up while standing on the dock. There are control stations to both port and starboard. The one to the port side also has fuel levels. Naturally, there's an engine room in each hull and they're accessed from hatches right in the cockpit deck. Let's take a look. The entry is a vertical ladder leading to the area just abaft of the engine. That means there's plenty of access behind and room to squeeze along the sides of the 1136 horsepower CAT C18 Acer. A deck plate just behind lifts to reveal the battery boxes. I'd like to see those higher up in the compartment. The compartment is remarkably well insulated. A fixed firefighting system is to the outer bulkhead where the main power switch is just behind. Below are three fuel filters, two for the main and one for the gen set. Then the generator. The water maker is just across with the air chiller system just above. Fully back is clear access to the steering gear and the shaft and dripless seal are also easily accessible. And take a look at this, an ultrasonic hull cleaner. This serves as anti-fouling for the boat and yes, it's to both sides. And for more involved maintenance, there's another hatch that can be opened. No need for cutting into the deck. The port side is largely a mirror image of the starboard with minor exceptions, this cord reel being one. The main electrical panel is in the salon and to port, AC above, DC is below. Another electrical panel is to the port companionway at the base of the stairs. Taking a look at the side decks, 21 inches wide. The bulwarks come up 32 inches. Right at the back, we've got the intakes for the engine room and fuel fills. Stepping up, the bulwarks are now at 23 inches with the rail height coming up to 31 inches. At midship, the width stays at 21 inches. We step up and now the bulwarks become 13. Rails at 29. Continuing forward, another step up. At that step, waste discharge. Now the bulwarks 12 inches, 32 inches to the top of the rail. Fully forward, massive storage compartments to both sides. In the center of the deck, access to the anchor that is running through the bow, and there are snubber lines attached. These snubbers act as a bridle to help stabilize the boat while at anchor so you don't get any rolling moment. The chain is all marked for length. The road storage is just behind, along with even more storage. The Flying Bridge Helm is the only operating station on the boat, not including, of course, the control stations at the lower aft deck. Here, are three 27-inch screens form the glass dash. To port are a digital fuel gauge, fire and water pump alarms. The lower panel includes the numbered pad for selecting the array of closed-circuit cameras throughout the boat. Alongside is the ship's alarm panel, then the VHF. The twin cat displays flank the center-mounted compass. Twin Garmin multi-data displays and a center autopilot are just ahead of the wheel with the engine controls to the right of those. And then the bow thruster control. Further right and above is the main bilge pump control panel. Behind are two stid helm seats, fully adjustable with a small platform elevating the operator when standing. For her impressive beam, the PC-74 is an easy boat to handle. Tight confines are no match for her maneuverability, but keep one hand on the controls and the other on the wheel as differential thrust is needed to bring her around tight turns. As we were coming out of the inlet, it immediately became apparent that we were on a catamaran. With boats pounding all around us, including the camera boat, we just sliced cleanly through the swells with hardly a bit of notice. We also noticed that the steering indicator, the heading indicator, and the compass were showing conflicting information indicative of the rudders being out of alignment. Not surprising as this was a fresh delivery and still being commissioned, so we'll likely get a bit of drag for our performance numbers. And that turned out to be the case, as our speed topped out at only 21 knots. Once Horizon was able to realign the rudders, they re-ran the performance test and got a top speed of 24 knots. And to their credit, even sent us pictures to prove it. As if her docile handling wasn't enough, she also accelerates from a level attitude, so guests will remain comfortable. 
These sea kindly attributes are definitely unique characteristics to catamarans, and quite frankly, it's the reason why virtually all high-speed ferries are cats. It's also why more and more people are gravitating to them, and in our opinion, with good reason. Upon returning to the dock, it was easy maneuvering with the mains and thruster to layer up nice and gently with the crosswind having little effect on the handling. So we've got the good handling characteristics that we've come to appreciate from catamarans, along with good performance and a stylish interior, but that's another video. Be sure to look for it. For now, that's my full sea trial and performance evaluation on the Horizon PC-74. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.